You know, I uh, have attended numerous conferences in the United States with numerous organizations there, and they are great, but I tell you what, I absolutely love the conferences that have been put on here. Um, because I attended the one in Barcelona, which was just excellent, and this one is just like that. Uh, things are so professionally done. The, uh, the presentations were excellent, and I just feel, uh, I'm just very excited to be here to uh, be able to present my research. You know, I, I, I always talk about transformative learning in the way that it changes the way that someone thinks, the way they act, or the way that they feel. Now, how we achieve transformational learning is completely conditional upon the individual and conditional upon how we design our learning environments. And that's what my talk was about, is how do we truly design learning environments to transform one's experience, their learning, in order that they can experience something they've never experienced before. And that's the hope. You know, we talk a great deal in our literature within our field about transformative learning. And my goal was to define it. And then more importantly than define it was to be able to show how it is applied in numerous learning environments that I and my team have developed. Well, I think, I, again, as I spoke about, I think the challenge that we have is when schools are driven by the standard-based approach and it then impacts how the students are, excuse me, how the teachers are teaching to the test, when you introduce an informal learning environment, such as the ones that I presented this morning, be it uh, geothenic or education, that there's a struggle to get students to always focus on and the teachers, more importantly, to focus on students doing authentic research, authentic activities. I think the other uh, issue related to that is that it's, it takes more time. It takes more time to have your students going out into the real world to do this research, grabbing real world d data, taking time to analyze it. And thus, when you have classrooms that are getting bigger, when you're teaching to more students, you are then uh, up against that. So is it such that students are doing and teachers are doing that more. I don't know the actual data on that, but I do know that in our field, all we're doing is continually telling people that we want them to focus on authentic activities. Well then, as a designer, as a professor of learning technologies, my goal is to design these programs and these software pieces that afford that, that allow teachers to do that. And so students can actually get out into the real world and do it. I mean, many of my projects uh, today, that's what they do. Uh, my new We Explore project, it allows students themselves to do their own adventure learning projects. So they can take their iPad, go out into the landscape, and do their own analysis. And so I think that's what we need to do. We need to create these technologies that give students and teachers opportunities to go out and do those authentic, uh, authentic collection of data. Well, I think so, I, and I think so, and I think that we're doing them a disservice if we do not create these environments with the affordances of the technology. I mean, we know that students, just like you and I, are walking around with our iPhones in our hand or a Droid or iPad, whatever it might be, and so why not use what they know uh, in order to collect data and bring it into the classroom? So it's, a, it's actually a pretty fun uh, field to be in. It is. In fact, there are so many projects that I presented this morning that are free for them to use. I presented the new, one of the newest technologies out of the Learning Technologies Media Lab, which is called Flipgrid. Uh, we talked about um, We Explore, we talked about Urtication, North of 60, all these different projects. And they can go to my website, chasingseals.com, or they can go to the Learning Technologies Media Lab website, which is lt.umn.edu, and they can find out about all these projects and get involved with them. You know, when I look at over a decade of doing these different projects and we think about the success of them or what we should have done differently, I think that what we do need to do is celebrate what we did achieve. And what we did achieve was students from all around the world coming into an online learning environment and doing research around the issues that we were presenting them. And so we, I never had any idea that the adventure learning projects in the beginning were going to be so successful. But 
it was because of the adventure, it was because of the narrative, it was because that students could get involved and start collecting their own data and sharing it with the world that they were successful. And that's what we've built upon. And now as you see, one project has led into the other. So go north into Earth education, into north of 60. And so now we have students in the Arctic collecting this knowledge of the elders. And that was only a dream of mine years ago, and now it's, it's, it's happening. And so those are some of the successes. And we also have a lot of research. We have a lot of research that we've collected over the years that are showing not only the pedagogical strategies to integrate this into the classroom, uh, student learning, student motivation, the affordances of it. Uh, and so there's not only the projects that have gotten into the classroom, but then also the research related to it. I think that's one thing that's really, really important to me is this idea that we not only talk about what should be done within our field, but then we actually do it and we actually create these projects. And that's what uh, I've, been, I've been focusing on and uh, fortunately I've been able to get funding to support that. Well, I think there's so many things to talk about in, in the sense of where I've traveled and what they believe education is, how it's important, the innovation that they've had. Um, you know, I've traveled to many remote communities around the world. And so when you talk about innovation, it really is going to be based on how you, what you value. So for example, in the Arctic, one might say that they're being very innovative because they are building these new schools and they're getting wired, uh, they're getting new technologies in order to bring those opportunities to their students. However, one might also talk about innovation where they are bringing traditional uh, Inuit elders into the school to be a principal along with someone from the South, for example. So now you have one that is focused on the traditional knowledge and the traditional cultures and at the same time focused on uh, going through the curriculum and the standards that the local government has given. So it's the, the mesh of the two. I would call that innovation. So the innovation is not always in the sense of technology, it's in the sense of pedagogy and it's the approaches that you take. So you take a, the, the far cry from the Arctic and you go to Africa, for example. And innovation there is going to be about how to adapt to the changing environment truly. It's going to be about how they are able to get water more efficiently. It's going to be about how they can bring students together in, uh, in newer buildings in order to educate them as a whole. And so it's going to be how to plant maize corn uh, out in an environment that was used to be absolutely fertile and had no problems growing this and now they're struggling with it. Uh, so there's so many different innovations that I've seen uh, and obviously they're not innovations like we now have developed the iPhone, you know, these are small steps of innovation that are really fun to document, really fun to discuss and really, and really fun to think about how we can work with them with technology in order to make and experience better and then also share it with the world. Right, you know, the, uh, the experiences that we had in Africa were such that you would have communities that wouldn't have running water, you'd have communities that um, have very little. But one thing that we did find is that people were connected via mobile phones. And, and thus, everywhere we went, people were texting, and uh, it was definitely the norm. So when you, when you think about that, and you think about the divide there, and think about how different that is from uh, Spain or, or the, the states, we would think about education in how we were going to provide it with technology. I don't know that we should focus on technology to be honest, in those communities. I think we should first focus on how we get water to the schools, how we uh, provide an environment that's safe, provide an environment that students can actually learn together in a way that is motivating for them, where they're sharing their own cultural knowledge. And then after that, we can focus on how we can create mobile solutions for them. But right now, that's not on the top of their, their goals. Uh, so it's, it's, it's very different uh, depending on what culture you're in. If I was in Gallowinkle in Australia with the Australian Aborigines, they uh, have a, a very different need than someone in the Arctic or someone in Africa or someone in South America. The idea of how pedagogy is different, I, as I mentioned in one of my sessions today, 
I think one of the struggles also in these communities are getting teachers there that really care, getting teachers who uh, want to make a difference, getting teachers that want to understand the culture, getting teachers who want to do more than just collect the dollars and leave. Um, these students, just like if you had a student in your, in your, if you had your own you know, child and you had them in school, you would want a teacher that really cared about them. And that is what they need. They need stu teachers that are going to be there, that are going to, be care, about, that are going to care about them, that they are, no, are going to be there for five years and beyond. And that, I think, is what, what's really important um, within these communities. So <clears throat> I know that's not specific to pedagogy, but what it is specific to is what the students need within those communities. Um, in the sense of pedagogical strategies, there are some being very innovative, as I mentioned to you, where you have, uh, you, you can go to Arctic Norway with the Sami, and they are working on how to keep their language alive, and they're using distance education a great deal. Uh, so that's very innovative, and their pedagogy they use is very innovative. So it really is contextual, and it compl is com completely dependent upon the culture. You know, the, the most valuable thing that I've learned is that we really need to take the time to understand a culture and identify what it is that can improve their experience in education, in the revitalization of the culture, in their life before we try to put on them what we think is important. And so before we go in and say, okay, you should be using this educational program because this is what you need to do. Well, do you actually understand the culture and do you actually understand the people before you go in and tell them what they need to know? Uh, that's what's important to me. Um, it's also important to me over the years that we uh, delivered a program that was respectful and was one that the culture and the location that we we're studying about and, and would be appreciative of what we put together so that we did it right. Um, that is really important to me. It's about delivering this education that is appropriate, this, this education that is innovative, and this education that is culturally and contextually correct. You know, the, the, the idea of mobile applications, first of all, I think it has many opportunities for us. Uh, and it first comes down to very simple things such as battery life. You know, you, you think about battery life of 10 years ago to today, it completely changes the way we're able to use a device. So that's one thing. The idea of apps and the idea of having a 99 cent app that anyone can download and utilize within the classroom is also a game changer. However, it still is going to come down to designing apps that meet the needs of the students and the teachers in the, in the curriculum of today. Just like some of the projects that I do, we can't just develop an app and expect them to be thrown into a classroom to solve the problems. So number one, we have to really work together with what it is that students need and the teachers want. And then related to that is what's most important than all everything, and that's the pedagogy. That is, how are we going to utilize these apps within the classroom in order that students can be motivated, that they can learn with them, and that they can hopefully see that this is something that is valuable to them. There's many studies that have been done over the years when you take a technology that is used in your everyday social life and you try to put it in education, it doesn't work. So you take instant messaging. Remember the days of instant messaging, which some of us still do. But we did studies years ago that this is something that was done all the time between students. And now you put it into the classroom, and as soon as you put an academic twist to it, they didn't want to use it, right? And so there are so many things that we still need to uh, overcome. But unless we get going, and unless we start developing, and unless we start really start thinking about this, we're not gonna see that change. And I think it's really an exciting time to be in education and a really exciting time to be uh, working with technology because 
we can have an impact and we can because the devices are at a point that we can uh, really see the fruition of the battery life, the, the, the apps that are affordable. And I think also there's an added motivation for both the student and the teacher to use them in the classroom because it's fun. I hope that I can't envision it. Uh, and, and what I mean by that is I hope that it's just so different than what we're doing right now because when you think about what we've accomplished in 10 years, you know what, we've done okay, but we can do a lot more regarding education. The technology has changed a great deal. Uh, 10, 15 years from now, I think we're going to see a, a great deal of mobile learning, uh, if not almost completely. I, I know that makes the universities, the face-to-face -face universities really nervous, but we're going to get to a point where the learning is going to be on the fly. I know what people say that it is now, it's not. I think we're, going, we're, we're getting there. Um, the reason it's not completely there is because we haven't designed learning environments that are conducive to these platforms. Uh, but I, I do think that it's going to be anytime, anywhere learning that uh, hopefully focuses on things that right now we can't envision. I think that's the other thing that I love about my job is that literally every morning you can wake up and say, my job is to create knowledge. It truly is. And it's to create something that hasn't been developed or even thought about yet. That's the beauty of academia. And that's just like my, my adventure learning projects or, or whatever uh, I might think of next. That's the beauty of what we do. And thus, thinking about what it's going to be like for 15 years from now, it's going to be, a, it's going to be hopefully completely different than what I can envision. Again, as I, as I told uh, the organizing staff and as I've talked with the people who are participating in the conference, this is a great conference. It really is. It, 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 it really brings together these people who have a lot of passion, who want to share their knowledge. And also the one thing that I really appreciate is that it is done so professionally. Uh, the, the, everything about it is very respectful of our profession. And we are brought into this environment from all around the world. And people are sharing their knowledge. and. I really think it's, it's a great conference and people are doing a great job. And so I would uh, thank the organizing committee for the work that they've done regarding this. And this is not only me saying it, I've heard it from numerous people. And also the sessions that I've been attending and presenting at, the research is really well done. And, and people are uh, excited to not only share, but collaborate thereafter. People are talking afterwards about how they can collaborate together. So it's pretty fun times right now uh, with technology and being here at this conference. My next destination is the Arctic, uh, again, and I am, am very excited about this. It's uh, one of the largest teams I've taken to the Arctic. We're going to be going to the Baffin Island with the North of 60 project in the Canadian Arctic, and we're going to be working with the schools there, the professional development around capturing their knowledge uh, with the videos and sharing them online. And we'll also be traveling with the elders. We'll be traveling with uh, uh, the people within this region as we experience their life. And we are also sharing the, the latest project that we have.